I guess welcome to Michigan for the people that haven't uh, been here before. Um, I am up in the northern part of Michigan. If we can, yeah, I guess we can see that. This kind of small print down here, but that's Detroit down here. Uh, I live up in the northern part of Michigan. It's a, a resort area where everybody comes to play, and I get to live here, and a uh, great place to live, and we love it here. Mentioned the vibration issues. There's three issues in vibration that we need to be involved with or, or need to understand and, and, and prevent. I want to prevent vibration, not fix it after I start to get vibration. So the first thing is our checking method, holding it on with a good, safe, secure way. So I'm going to use a faceplate. Now, faceplate is going to seat around the rim and not have a hump in the middle. I don't want to have any vibration. Uh, the second thing is we don't want the wood itself to flex. A good, uh, a good uh, illustration of that would be doing a goblet. I can't turn the goblet stem all the way down and then go and hollow it. You know, it would flex and vibrate. So I have to keep a mass of wood behind it before I finish, uh, before I get into the stem, I've got to do this in stages. And I do my hollow forms in stages also so that I don't allow the wood to flex. Why did I leave this wood so big? I didn't even turn it round yet. Okay, I left it big so that I have support for it that when I make my hollow form that I've got a base of wood to support it that the wood's not going to flex and vibrate on me. All right, so we got our face plate. We've got our piece of wood on, some scrap wood here. <clears throat> We've got part of a shape going. All right. So that first stage is all done, that outside of the, the top. I didn't take it all the way down to where it's going to sit on the table. I don't know where that's going to be until I do the, the stage three. So stage one is the outside of the, the top stage. Stage two is the inside hollowing. Stage three, I'm going to take it down to where it's going to sit on the table. Stage four, I'm going to finish the hollowing inside. So we need to do it in stages. If we're going to do a hollow form with a small foot, we can't go out and hollow without vibration. It's a vibration issue too. So this is a little bit hard for beginners, for people that are just starting to visualize that shape and to make stage one so that it flows into stage three where we want it to. So it just takes some, some practice, some experience to be able to extrapolate this line and uh, finish the bowl in your mind's eye because we can't take this wood away or we'll have vibration issues, right? Okay. The third thing that can happen that can cause vibration is we can exceed the limits of our tools. If we're using a boring bar, we dangle off the tool rest so far on a boring bar, and then the wood, the, the bar just starts to flex and vibrate. We can exceed the limits of our tools real easy. Even a bowl gouge or, or spindle gouge. Uh, I use the big uh, bowl gouge and spindle gouge at 5 8 diameter, even a spindle gouge because of its strength to hang over the tool rest further and reach around to get a detail that I want. I can do little things with a big tool. I can't do big things with a little tool. So the access to details comes from the steepness of the angle, not the size of the the, the gouge. So I, I use the larger gouges. I don't use or have any of the smaller gouges at all. Okay because I don't want to deal with vibration. If you like the kind of teaching I do and the details that I get into, come back and see me again. Uh, do me a favor, if you will, and uh, talk about this on your Facebook page or to your club members, put it in your newsletter that this stuff is available uh, for a real reasonable price and even the vendor showcase, even free events that we do and uh, point them uh, in our direction. Uh, promote it on your social media, if you will, and uh, pass the good word that uh, we're doing the job up here. And we'll see you in a few weeks.